Grab, grab, grab the instruction guide for this video down below. Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business. Welcome back to the channel. Today in QuickBooks Point of Sale, we are going to start a little series on having multiple vendors for the same item. So you have a product and sometimes you get it from one vendor, sometimes you get it from another vendor. It might be a pricing war or you might uh, your one vendor might be out so you order from the other. Those will all fall into line with this uh, train of thought. And so we're going to just start out by setting up an item that actually has multiple vendors uh, that we can order from at different price, price points. Uh, so I have actually some computer memory here. I know this is all the same brand memory, but we are going to pretend that we just have this item called computer memory and it uh, is going to be able to be ordered from multiple different vendors. Before we do that, I'm going to have you click on the link down in the description below to get over to our QuickBooks Point of Sale Facebook group. You can ask for training or questions on errors or how to do different things in Point of Sale. Over a thousand other QuickBooks Point of Sale users and store owners are going to help you in our wonderful community, including myself. I will be there to chime in. And if you're on YouTube today, don't forget to hit subscribe. So you get all the latest, greatest QuickBooks point of sale videos coming at you all the time. Okay, let's get into this now. <laughs> I'm on my item list now and I am going to look, oh, I already have it highlighted. Down here at the bottom, you can see eight gig computer memory, which is what I have in my hand. And so I'm gonna edit this item. You know, a lot of people will start out with uh, one item and then they're trying to order it and their vendor is out. So they have to go and seek another vendor and find somebody else who also has it. Uh, for this first uh, main screen here, it's gonna be the vendor that you order from most often with the order cost that it normally costs you from that vendor. Just to differentiate, I am going to fill in uh, a little part number here. We've got 2R. 5417. This might be the catalog number according to this vendor. So just keep it straight. And then for the UPC, I'm going to use this first one that I have here. Now I'm going to pretend that I have two other vendors that I can get the same or something very similar or a, a substitution of the same memory from a different vendor. So once I have all the info in for the main vendor, I'm gonna hit alternate vendor here. You're gonna notice that my main vendor is crucial. When I hit alternate vendor, uh, I've set up a couple vendors that I can get this same uh, product from. One is gonna be HP. And you know, this is a little finicky. So I'm gonna tell you that when you put in the alternate vendors here, the other one's gonna be Kingston. I don't know why it doesn't like it. Uh, I'm gonna click off and hit the X and you just want to click on alternate vendor and come back. Okay, they saved. That's good. Uh, one time I went through this and it did not save the vendor name. I don't know why that would be. So from the HP vendor of the eight gigabyte memory, my cost from them is actually uh, $20 and 50 cents. And then my ordering cost on the Kingston catalog is actually $23. And so you want to put that information in. Now, very important, you can just put in alternate vendors here and just have their cost for the exact same UPC and ALU. You'll just leave these all blank and it will always just recognize the ones from the main screen there when you are ordering. Uh, however, certain vendors, uh, this comes to mind, let's see, if you have like a hardware store and you're getting a certain type of screw or piece or part, uh, bracket, whatever. I'm sure there's a ton of different vendors that pretty much make the exact same size screw and nut and bolt and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, you would just list them here with their different pricing, but they might actually have a whole different UPC for their bolt than the other company does. So that's where you'd have an alternate UPC. And then ALU, which is kind of like SKU, alternate lookup number, that could be their catalog number or whatnot. So I am going to actually, I'm going to say this is the HP one. Oh, let's see, was that the same? I must have this entered into another product because it found it as being 
uh, a whole another product. So that you saw that it said du duplicate UPC. Let me try this one. Okay. Ooh, that totally booted us right out of there because my uh, barcode scanner has the enter button clicked at the very end of it. So we're gonna come back in by hitting edit. Then I hit alternate vendor. Okay, we have it there. So I've added the alternate UPC there, and then like this one could be uh, whatever the catalog number is for that. This one, maybe I just want the alternate catalog number. And these come in to uh, being very important, these ALUs, when you're doing a purchase order and you're actually ordering from one of these alternate vendors, you wanna have their catalog number. Oh, yep, it looks like that whole one that I that I scanned in there is from I must use that in some other <laughs> in some other demonstration so didn't quite go as planned but we could just you know it could have that catalog number and this one could have this catalog number and so when I'm ordering from Kingston this is gonna show up on the PO and then Kingston will know exactly what I'm ordering because that's their catalog number makes sense so you fill it in like that and you close out and join us in the next video and we will talk about ordering and receiving with alternate vendors and you'll see how that plays out. My name's Peter with BlackRock Business. If this was helpful and you didn't know anything about alternate vendors before, uh, go ahead and hit that like button. One last note is some people might use this just so that they can ring up multiple UPCs as the same exact product. Uh, I've seen that as a workaround. So. My name is Peter with BlackRock Business. You have an excellent day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.